that track again. Oh, Are they just like circling around? She's lost in the sauce. She's lost in the sauce. She wanna come over here. She's she crazy, she crazy with those spaghettios. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so we all we ready? Yeah. What's going on, fam? It's your girl back again with another podcast for y'all today. So this is like really exciting for me because I'm here with the man. It was possible. The man of the hour, the man of the town, my guy, Kirk. A lot of people think that when I say your name, I'm saying Kirk. And I'm Kirk? like, it's not Kirk. Kirk. Like, like Kirk Franklin? Yeah. Is it Kirk Franklin or Kirk Franklin? I don't think it's Kirk. Kirk. I think it's Kirk. Like K R R K or something like that? <laughs> like, okay. I don't want to say it online, but yeah, I think it's Kirk uh, Franklin. Yeah, so this is my friend Kirk. Um, thank you for coming on no problem. and no being problem. here. Like, it really means a lot to me. So I appreciate that. You're real one. Uh, so today, oh yeah, subscribe, like, comment. You know, I haven't been on for a while. Give you feedback. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Hit me up. Find me on Spotify. Society Speaks. Y'all got me on YouTube. Y'all already know where to find me. So just stay real. Y'all real people. I appreciate y'all. Um, in today's podcast, I really just wanted to talk to you about um, music. Okay. Yeah, All right. music. Because um, you are an artist. You're a musician. You mm. are... The maestro. Yeah, the maestro. Maestro. I ain't never heard of the maestro before, but yeah, you are just that guy that's into yeah. that. When I first met you, um, I didn't... When I looked at you, I was like, oh, he doesn't he look like a artist kind of guy, but then at the same time... I'm offended. Hold up, boy. Wait, well, I, so what did I look like? Uh, well, you look more like maybe a, a handyman or something. <laughs> Alright, okay, okay. That, that's a personal offense. You get one of no, those, no, that's no, it. No, 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 no. No, I felt like you, you played guitar. When I seen you, I was like, the long hair, the beard, I was like, he's a guitar guy. Mm. I, you didn't strike me as like, I mean, I didn't know you played piano either. But I was that's a guitar cool. for sure. No. Ukulele. Ukul- no. Ukulele? <laughs> Talking about some, like, what, what's that one thing, uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I saw that in you. No. Okay, all right. No. Well, you're, you're, you're into music, so that was perfect for me. I was like, he's the perfect guy to talk to because artists, any type of, anything that's dealing with the arts, I'm always interested in. Mm-hmm. But I don't discriminate. Anybody can be on this podcast. But... You know, I feel like we're alike in some ways. We just do different things. I would agree with that, actually. Yeah. That's actually, yeah. I would agree with that. So, so what you want to talk about? So, I just wanted to give the audience, first of all, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Like, where you're from? How old are you? What do you do? So, I, so I'm from, I was born in Kentucky. Uh, you know, little KFC in my bloodline. Um, KFC. Little KFC. You already know. But I was born in Kentucky. I was raised there for about four years. And then when Katrina hit New Orleans, my family moved down to New Orleans. And I kind of went from that bluegrass kind of like roots with like, you know, some pale white people on a banjo or something like that. A little dee 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 dee. And then I went from that to some sweet jazz and blues in New Orleans and everything. And so. <clears throat> I stayed there for about 10 years, lived in New Orleans, and then I came here to Lafayette, and it was like a whole entire like culture change for me. Mm. So, I'm also 21, uh, my full name is Kurt Farrington, mm-hmm. so, yep. you know. Cool, cool, cool. Good old Kentucky. Yeah, I don't really know much about Kentucky, I do have family out there. Really? Uh, yeah, I don't talk to them too much, but shout out to y'all. Uncle and auntie, if y'all watching, y'all probably not, but yeah, I do have a few family members that live out there, and uh, I don't really know much about it, but I heard it's a cool town. Have you been to Kentucky? No. No? No, no Why Kentucky. Not? I don't know. Okay, okay, this is the thing about Kentucky. Oh, wait, no, 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 I am so sorry. I have been to Kentucky. I actually have. Really? Yes, because I went to the Kentucky Derby. I worked there. That's so crazy. I almost forgot y'all, man. You're telling me you visited Kentucky only for the Kentucky Derby? No, it wasn't. So, or was okay. it for like a job or something? It was for a job. Yeah. Mind y'all, for all of y'all watching, y'all who were anybody Crossroads related people, I went to CLC at Crossroads Church. Shout out to y'all. 
Um, and we would work during the year to basically pay our tuition off. So we would oh, travel okay. to different places and work for like Microsoft, and they would hit us up with per diem and stuff like that kind of stuff. Yeah. We worked there for about a week, make our little cash, pay off our tuition. Make a bag and then give it off. Yeah, basically. So, which was cool. I'm glad they did that for us. That was nice. Uh, so we worked the Kentucky Derby one year, and that's how I went to Kentucky. <laughs> what was it like? It was really for you, cool. What was your experience? I mean, honestly, when I was working there, I didn't have a cool job. But uh, I did, uh, I swept the floors and stuff, you know, yeah. clean the dishes, things like that. Uh, but what I noticed about the Kentucky Derby was that, like, people spend some cash. People really bet on these horses like it is their last leg in life. Like, y'all put all, hey, I'm not down to nobody that, that, that does these types of things, but that was some, y'all putting no cash for these horses, y'all. Well, you gotta understand, like, Kentucky's like a dry state, so, I mean, it's the only other outlet that we got, so. Clearly. <laughs> I mean, clearly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I noticed that it was, it was very interesting to see how people were passionate about this, but, um, uh, people would throw money all around the ground, you know, I'll sweep the floors, thank y'all, you know, all the drunk people, you know what I'm saying, shout out to y'all, you know, so, I thought it was cool, I thought it was nice, I liked the passionate side of how people respond to certain things, so, as That's far cool. as... What, go ahead. As far as what I know, it, it seemed nice to me. It was like a stack full of bills in one hand, Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket in the other hand. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Curdle yeah. Sanders. Curdle Sanders. But, uh, but yeah, but Kentucky, all that, New Orleans, being here in Lafayette, I mean, I was exposed to all kinds of music. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm able to kind of vibe with different like genres and cultures and be able to understand it because I mean, I've been exposed to just about everything. Yeah, I yeah. can tell. I can tell because you have a lot of. Because we talked once about, we talked about a little bit about Wayne, and we talked about different like, even in the, the Christian sector, like we we, yeah. we had some conversations about music. Yeah. We know a lot. Yeah. About a lot of different people, so I can tell for sure. So I kind of want to jump into how we met, and then kind of jump into the questions. So do you want to go and, and give your side of how we met, or do you want me to go first? I want you to go first, actually. You okay, first. all right, cool. All right, so me and Kurt actually met uh, here at, well, first of all, okay, for those of y'all who don't know, um, I am a security guard. I've never put this out public, publicly, uh, but I am a security guard. You took so me in a headlock one time. I did, because I'm just that strong. Yes, like I was out five seconds. Stop that. <laughs> so anyway, I'm a security guard, so and I was working here at a church, and through me working here at the church, I stumbled upon this guy, Kurt. But I always say this all the time. Kurt didn't want to talk to me at first. He was he was scared. He thought I was he thought I wasn't you know a chill cool person. You know he was thinking something else. So he really didn't talk to me much. But as time went on, you know, he just was like, you know, let me just see what this, who this person is, so you get to know her. So then I think one day you just, I don't know if you had came up to me or you said something. I think you were with Megan that day too. You had told me something. I don't know. You said something. No, 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 no. I wasn't with Meg. Oh. Well, yeah. I, you just said something to me, and then we kind of started a conversation, and I think we just got deep from the first. No, I, I, I walked up to you and I said, Yo, what's popping? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I should have known that. You did. You did. And I don't know, we got this conversation and... And it just happened. The rest is history. So that's your side? Yeah, that's really how we met. Alright, so she used to work <laughs> security, right? And then I was the worship intern at my church. So I would do, like, the music and everything. I would sing, you know. And so whenever I got to the church, I had this, like, mission mindset. Like, I got to go to my office, take care of a bunch of paperwork, right? I'm like focused on everything. I didn't even notice she was there until about two or three months after I was there. Yeah. I could like catch my breath, right? So she wants to say that I was avoiding her, but that in fact, I just never saw her. No, right? you lied. You lied. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it was up to the point that I was actually able to have like a breath or something. And I was like, you know what? Who is this person? Let me go see this person. And so I just walked up to you and said, what's popping? And you're like, nothing. You and so we got talking. Actually, you probably had like your crossword puzzle or something going on. I, I probably did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had Sudoku going oh or something. <laughs> yeah, he always 
sometimes because I, I used to do um, work. I mean, I'm sitting there, you know, I can't really be on my phone like that. So what else? Grandma. You know, a little word search, a little, <laughs> a little word little, search. Read a little book, you know what I'm saying? Read the so you got your little knitting project that you got going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. Yo, all right, we can go. On, we gonna go on to the next question because he gonna call me the whole time. All right, so first question: mm-hmm. How did you get into singing? Because he does sing as well. So how did you get into singing and uh, playing an instrument? Uh, was it something that you were drawn to, or did your parents get you into this type of thing when you were growing up? Like, how did you get into this sector? So originally, my parents wanted me to be an architect. Um, they wanted me to go into the architecture field, like construction and stuff like that. Okay. Which I was all down for and everything, but just out of the blue, out of nowhere, I was like, you know what? Let me let me try some piano lessons. So I was actually the one who called a music store, asked to see if there were any piano teachers in that area, and then after that, I actually worked for the money to pay for those lessons. My parents didn't help me out at all. Whoa! Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they drove me to my teacher and everything. But the way I paid for it, though, is the teacher that I was taking lessons from, she was an older lady. She couldn't take care of her yard and everything. And so I would go in, like, pull weeds, trim shrubs and everything, which my parents, they had a, a landscaping business. Okay. So from, like, four or five years old, I think around six, actually, I, uh, I would just pull weeds with them in flower beds, right? Wow. Yeah. And so I kind of did, it wasn't like I was getting paid, but at the same time I was like, I was exchanging a trade for another trade, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which I realized now looking back at that, I was like, <laughs> entrepreneur, Ooh. you know? So I got into that and then first it was piano mm-hmm. that I got into, learned how to play piano for about a year and a half. And then after that, I started taking opera lessons and voice lessons and stuff like that, which that kind of fell off once I moved here to Lafayette, which I was actually at NOCA, which is called New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. Okay. So it was like a school dedicated to students of the arts. That's here in Lafayette? No, no, no. In New oh, Orleans. oh, New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. Gotcha. Um, it's called NOCA, and I went there for about a year and a half as well, mm-hmm. and then got into cello, and then now I'm a DJ. Wow, so basically you were kind of like, you, you said you wanted to try something new. Is yeah, that- yeah, it was basically, I was just interested in it. Um, I saw a music store, I was like, you know what, they have a number, I called the number, they gave me this lady, and then that was it. So it's kind of like fate, kind of like destiny, like you were kind of just drawn to it. I guess you could say that actually, yeah. I uh, oh, okay. it just happened. I don't know. Looking back at it, I was like, if I hadn't I called that person, like I would not be here right now. That's crazy to think about. It's creepy and crazy at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's how really life works with anything that you do. It's always those one that one second, that one moment, that one thought, that one person. Yeah. You know, that can change everything. You know, it's almost like in chess, um, God, here we go with chess. This guy so it's almost like in chess, like when you make one move, that one move can determine whether or not you lose the whole entire game, right? Yep. So it's like every move that was placed in front of me was just, like it wasn't even me doing it, it was like something else was doing it. Yeah. God. God. Yeah. For sure, God. For sure. I love that. For sure. All right, so how many inter- instruments do you play? Four? No, five. Five. Five instruments. You play five instruments? Yeah, yeah. So piano, cello. Funny enough, I actually do play a little bit of guitar. Um, and then... We know that, Kurt. Because I'm <laughs> I used to play trumpet. Okay. Yeah. I actually wanted to play the trumpet and the drums in, in high school, but... Drums is something I could never get into. Like, I just never understood <laughs> drums. Okay. It made no sense to me. Just the instrument itself or just playing it? Like you're in Everything about it. It just made no sense to me. Why? Okay, first of all, you got you got two hands, right? Yeah. Okay, you got a bunch of like all that, right? Then you got like your feet going like pop, 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 right? 
How can people remember all of those things all at the same time? That's what I couldn't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I guess I, was, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking about, you know, the drum line? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh.
I would talk to God sometimes and be like, God, you just kind of like, you just left me here, like everybody else has something and I don't. Um, but over time, as I got older, I really started digging deep into finding what it was that I was get good at and what somewhat of what my purpose was. And I prayed to God every day, you know, when I went to ministry college and just asked him to reveal that to me. And lo and behold, he did. He did. And the day I found out, it was the greatest day of my life. They say uh, the two most important days of your life is the day you're, you were born and the day you find out why. And that was an extraordinary day for me when I found out my why. You know, you saying that actually reminds me of something. So, you know, there's there's people that have their talents and everything, mm-hmm. and there are other people that are just, like the same thing for me, whenever I discovered music, whenever music discovered me, I guess, mm-hmm. it was this, this overwhelming kind of like OCD in a way. Mm-hmm. Like I had an obsession about it. Yeah. It was a kind of obsession, obsession? Obsession. Yes. Is obsession? Yes. Yes, okay. It was a kind of like laser focus enjoyment that I found in it that kept me off the streets. Like it kept me out of out of drugs and stuff like that. Right. So the other thing too is I heard um I forget who like made the speech but he basically said there there's some people with some gifts and talents that, you know, are really easy to get into. And then there's some people that have some gifts and talents that take longer to, to marinate. Yes. And he was about saying, you know, whenever he was poor and everything, I, I really don't... I might know who you're talking about, too. Like, I know. yeah, whenever he was poor and everything, mm-hmm. he'd have to, you know, get, like, those commercial dinners and, like, pop in the microwave and everything. Yeah. But whenever he went to his, his mama's house and he had mama cooking, it tasted so good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And the reason why is because mom was cooking, she wouldn't start the day up, she started the day before. She, she let that chicken marinate. Right, right. right. She would let them carry it saute, mm, right? Right. And so whenever you sit down, there was, there was something special about it. And that's the thing about our gifts that a lot of people, they, they think that it has to happen now. It has, to, it has to be now. We live in a society that it has to be now. It has to be right when I want it. Exactly, yeah. Whenever God says, no. You gotta wait, cause you're more special, mm-hmm. right? You're more special. You got special gifts. You got special talents. You just gotta wait for it. That is the truth. That is yeah. the truth. Yeah. All right, Kurt. I see you. All right, man. So, where are we at right here? If someone wants um, to get into music or create music or start maybe playing an instrument. Uh, where should they start first with that? So, I should repeat the question one more time? So basically, let me ask you like this. What advice would you give to someone who wants to create music and be an artist in some way? Or even just play an instrument. Uh, but they don't know how to begin. Like, they don't even know where to go, what to do, to even start playing, to even maybe put their music out there, if they're nervous to put that out there. Like, what should they do about that? So, I'll start with the first part of that. So, if you're new to music, right, and you have no clue what music is, a lot of what I did was I listened to certain genres that spoke to me, and I just stayed with those genres. Okay. Right? Okay. So, like, for me, whenever I was growing up, it was classical music. Classical music all the time, right? And then from there, I went into just different groups and everything. But it's that initial, what genre do you like? and then learning how to branch out. So if you want to go into music, look at the genre that you're listening to and what's the main foundation of that genre, right? So like for instance, I love piano music. So I went into piano, why? Because I love the sounds of it. Um, I have one friend who loves R&B, trap music, and rap music and stuff like that and he went into drums and everything because he liked beats. Right? And so he started developing his beats by playing them on the drums. Right. Um, and that's how he started off. So it's kind of just listening listening to your ear. Mm-hmm. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of oxymoronic, but yeah. Yeah. Listening to your ear and realizing what you like and then pursuing what you like about that. 
so that's one side of it. Now, if you're already in music and you're trying to, well, I'll just say this. If you're already in music and you're trying to, like, network and stuff like that, nowadays we have social media to where you can network just by having an Instagram page. Definitely. Um, you can legit just post one thing every week and you will find traffic. Uh, and that's what I did with like DJing and everything. Mm-hmm. Like I post one thing every single week and that's how I get gigs and stuff now. Because people are looking at what I'm doing, they like what I'm doing, they won't pay me money, I get to eat for that day. Hey, hey. hey. you already know. So yeah, that consistency, like you said, and I never heard it said like that. Like listen to your ear and the genre, like whatever you're drawn to, like, you know, that's where you should start. So that's interesting how you said that. I like that. Uh, but yeah, consistency is key. Yeah. And thank God for social media. Because thinking back in the day when people wanted to get into these types of industries, like the things they had to do. You had to know somebody, to know somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody's mama, cousin, everything. Right. Yeah. Like, and like the, the internet, it's just the internet is so powerful. And I know y'all probably hear this all the time, but it's just so true. The internet is so powerful how you can just post one thing or you can post consistently. And all it takes is for like the right people to hear that, mm-hmm. and they hit you up like like Kurt, saying, "Hey, you know, come here. Absolutely, we love you. Absolutely. This is great. You know what I'm saying? So thank God to the internet. I'm glad we were born in this era. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So I think actually that probably was the last question, Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this went by so quick. But hey. I appreciate you for coming on, man. You are a real one. This really means a lot, like I said. Y'all subscribe, like, comment, give y'all feedback. This was my first interviewee on my podcast. I feel special, man. Yes, you are very And honestly, I knew it had to be you. Like, when I met you and I saw it and I just seen how you, like, you're in worship, you're singing, you're DJing, everything you tell me. I was like, I gotta have, I gotta, I gotta. Are you doing worship over there? Well, you know, like during like Sundays and stuff. Oh, oh, that. Okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know there was a difference. Uh, okay, but anyway, yeah. yeah. So just seeing you in that in that mode is just I love it. Anytime you see somebody in mode, just drawn to them. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, thank yeah. you. No problem. And thank y'all. I don't know who else is like. Hey, if you, is there anything that you want them to follow you on? Any socials to get you up on? Ooh, so. My DJ account is DJ underscore MC1R. Um, that's my DJ account. And then my company name is Farrington Enterprise LLC. Uh, we deal with you know DJing, uh, any live sound, lighting, and stuff like that. Uh, and that's kind of, that's, that's my gig. That's my thing. Hey, so like he said, if y'all need a DJ, hit my guy. You need somebody to make it lit? Yes, if you need to turn up. Hit my guy Kurt. He's real good. I haven't been to any of your DJing things yet. Not yet, but I know it's going to be popping. I know it's going to be good. I'm also going to put it in the description for them yeah. so that if they yeah. do want to hit you up, they already know where to find you. Yeah. So, peace, y'all. I will be back. Stay I... motivated. Stay inspired. That was dope, man. That was cool. Yeah.